I'm Josh from Vacuums RS and Sewing 2 in Colorado, and I'm going to talk to you today about why you can't repair your Shark vacuum cleaner. About eight years ago, I wrote an article talking about the difficulties of Shark vacuum repair. We run service centers all across Colorado uh, for vacuum cleaners and sewing machines, and every day we see dozens and dozens of Shark vacuums in for repair. And I wanted to communicate to people some of the challenges that we had as a service center trying to get their machines working and some of the obstacles that we were running into. Since that time, we've gotten more traffic to that site across the country as people are researching how to fix what seem to be really basic problems with their sharks and are running into problems finding the very simple components necessary to fix their machines. I'm here just to say you're not crazy uh, if you ran across this video and you're frustrated and you're having a hard time taking it apart, it's not you, it's per design. So from the very beginning, Shark has never sold uh, repair-based components. So things like vacuum cleaner belts, right, that other brands might sell for four or five or six dollars. Shark doesn't sell those components at all. Uh, things like cords, right, uh, it's very common vacuum cleaners you might accidentally run over your cord, right, and chew it up, or your puppy chews up your cord, and you're like, hey, no big deal, I'll just replace the cord on my vacuum. It's very difficult to do this for a couple reasons. A, they don't sell the components, but B, they progressively they are making their machines harder and harder to get inside of. So one thing that people frequently run into when they want to do something that appears to be simple on their shark, like, oh, my brush roller's not spinning, and think maybe I've got a bad belt, is they just try to open up the bottom of their vacuum, right? Just to look and see if maybe a belt is broken. This is before they find out they can't even buy a belt. Shark initially used Phillips head screws in their machines, right? Everybody has a Phillips head screwdriver sitting in their junk drawer. But what they found was people were attempting to fix the machines, so they changed to Torx screws. A lot of people refer to those as the star-shaped screws, right? Most people don't have that type of driver in their cabinet. Beyond that, uh, Torx bits, your driver has to be the exact right size for that bit, right? So that wasn't enough of a challenge for Shark. They decided to make it even more difficult. So they started using multiple different sizes of Torx bits on any given machine. So in order to open your product to do basic maintenance or service, you had to have an entire set of Torx drivers just to take the stinking screws out. That uh, proved to be not even bad enough for Shark, so then they moved to uh, what we typically refer to as security bits. And these are the star-shaped bits that have a little stud in the middle of them. Those are bits that typically you can't even find at a hardware store. Um, you typically have to order them. They're not the most proprietary thing in the world to get. They're not impossible to get, but they're certainly not something that you have in your kitchen counter. So that's one problem. So, other challenge we've run into, um, they consistently keep changing the design of the machines. It seems like every week we have a different model of Shark walk in the short store that we've never seen before. They don't develop and create a product line for a period of time. It seems like every single week they're coming out with a totally different model. So some of us uh, will work very hard to try to source perhaps some aftermarket parts that are you know, really high failure rate parts. Uh, a common issue we see with sharks, the lower hose, and you may be watching this video because you've had this happen, the hose that's in the bottom of the machine will crack. It happens all the time, it's thin plastic, it bends back and forth, and it cracks, creating a suction leak, the machine doesn't work. They keep changing the size of the stinking hoses. So. You know, we may see that repair come in a lot. We work real hard to find the exact size hose. We stock it, and then three weeks later, Shark comes out with a new model that uses a different type of hose, and we're back to square one. So with the current uh, kind of version of Sharks that we're seeing that are very popular, the, they call them the dual clean, typically. These machines uh, typically have two brush rollers in them, right? Thus the duo clean. And this platform, we're finding, not only are they using proprietary screws, and they're using multiple different types of screws, and they're constantly changing the types of parts and not selling the parts at all. The machines now are snapping together, so there's internal tabs that will snap together. So they snap together, then they screw them together. So when our technicians, if they're brave enough, uh, make an attempt to repair the machines, they may remove all of the security bits and the multi-size screws 
and uh, the unit, the housing still won't open because it actually snaps together inside. And taking it apart, splitting the housing to get to, say, the power cable, for example, will actually crack those tabs and the machine will not go back together again properly. If this all looks like a conspiracy theory to you, I, I don't know if I'd call it a conspiracy theory because I think conspiracy theories are supposed to be somewhat secretive. To me, it's pretty obvious. Sharp doesn't want you to maintain or repair the product. They want you to dispose of it and buy a new one. And my interaction um, within the stores, uh, working on the floors, working with the technicians and talking to customers proves that that's a, a pretty effective business model. Most people who come into our stores with a Sharp for repair it's not the first shark they've owned, it's the fourth that they've owned. And after the fourth shark has failed, they go, well, you know, this is getting a little bit expensive. I'm buying a shark for $200 every couple of years. And so I'm gonna see if I can get this in repair. At that point, they're already $800 in with their fourth shark over, you know, five to 10 years perhaps. And, and that experience, I just see that so consistently, I can't call this conspiracy theory. I think this is just the way they do business. I guess that works for them. I guess it's profitable. Um, they're making money. It's not how I would choose to interact with my customers. Um, I have concerns both about the economic impact on everybody who vacuums, which is everybody, um, but I also have ecological concerns. We do our best to recycle some components from machines that are dropped off to us. Uh, we try to strip out the metals to get them to the scrapyard. But realistically, plastics recycling is not really that feasible in the United States. That we don't have good methods for that. And my concern is the amount of plastics that we're sending to the landfill from these hundreds of millions <clears throat> of vacuum cleaners every single stinking year has a profound ecological impact, even beyond the financial impact that we have on everybody who's replacing these machines. So I guess my point here is you're not crazy if this is your fourth shark and they keep breaking, and you're trying to figure out how to fix it, and you're running into all these obstacles, it's not you, it's deliberate, it's the way the system's made to be. There are alternatives, if you're interested, you can check out our other videos, we talk about other brands, brands that last longer, maybe perform better, brands that can be maintained. There's all kinds of stuff on our YouTube channel, um, and you can go to vacuumsrs.com, you can contact us directly if you have questions. Um, you can also just go to your local vacuum store because all of us, all the dealers of vacuum cleaners, we're all in the same position and we all pretty much have the same opinion about this issue. We have alternatives, we can stop the cycle. So if you have a local dealer, go check them out.